Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good to see you all today. We've got with us Michelle Fabrega, our love and relationship coach, and my fabulous partner, John Coleman. Hey, Michelle. Good to see you again. Michelle? Hi, John. Hi, Art. Michelle, Valentine's Day is just around the corner. You are Celebrating Act 2's love and relationship coach. You must have a lot of thoughts on Valentine's Day. <laughs> I do, I do. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think I'm a bit of an oddball there, but um, I'll share about it. So, yes, Valentine's Day is coming up. As we all know, our culture goes all crazy and um, a lot of expectations about it what you need to do for your partner. And it's usually, frankly, in a heterosexual couple anyway, it's usually the man who has to do certain things for the woman. And anyway, so there's a whole thing, right? There's a whole spectacle of that. And so I guess I like to invite people to, to decide what they want for themselves, like what they want as a couple. And if you're single, how you want to celebrate it for yourself? Because I think our culture has a bias also about being in a couple. And if you're not in a couple, then you're single and it, your life must be horrible and you're lonely, which isn't true for a lot of people. A lot of people enjoy their own autonomy and, and li living, on the own, living on their own. And it doesn't mean they don't have love in their lives. So I, I like to kind of just, anyway, mix it up a little bit, I guess. You know, this is sounding a little bit like uh, your um, version of Bah Humbug. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to name this episode Stupid Cupid. <laughs> yeah. So, so should everybody just ignore um, uh, this hallmark uh, uh, holiday? Uh, what's your recommendation? Well, my recommendation is, like I said, to make it your own. So if it's something that's important to you, absolutely celebrate it. If, you know, maybe that's the day you first had a date, you had your first date or whatever. Like, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's more like making sure you're doing it in a way that feels loving and joyful, not like a burden or an obligation, because then it's not as fun. I think also um, there's a pressure to make that day special. And it's like, frankly, I'm thinking to myself, at, you know, both personally and professionally, I want people to make every day special. Or, you know, at least take time, not just once a year, right? Like, it should be many times that you're, expressing your love, sharing your love. I'm not saying you're, you know, buying flowers weekly necessarily, unless that's your thing. And then, yeah, sure. Why not every week? Right. So what can you like, you know, certainly celebrate Valentine's Day in whatever form that makes sense for you, but do it in a way that you feel good about and um, maybe even talk about it in advance. So you don't, you know, you don't have expectations that, you know, one partner has and the other partner can't quite meet. That's what I want to say about it. But yeah, I, I've had my moments. When I, back in my earlier years when I was single a lot, which felt like I was single a lot, and unhappily single, I'll say, uh, that day was a bummer. It was a real bummer for me. So yeah. um, maybe I'm carrying a grudge about it. Who knows? Well, Michelle, I've got a completely different perspective for you, <laughs> which, which may help all those single people out there of whatever age. Um, and I, I think single people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s also find it a bummer, or more often find it a bummer. So here's my perspective. It is the historical... So not to get religious, but the original, the origin of Valentine's Day is based on the story of St. Valentine. St. Valentine was a, I think, a priest, but I don't know. He was imprisoned for his faith in who knows what year, and he had been teaching the daughter, if I get this right, the daughter of the king that imprisoned him, and uh, teaching her uh, uh, Christianity. And so while he was in prison, he would write to her and tell her that, uh, you know, don't worry about me and, and, and worry about your faith and uh, become a good person and all, of, all those nice Christian principles which he was teaching her, and he would sign it, your Valentine. And the concept is, the original concept of Valentine's Day is that it was love. It wasn't romantic love. 
it was, if you want to call it Christian love, but it was love of another human being. It was despite the fact that he was being imprisoned, he was giving love rather than uh, feeling resentment and hate. And so the, the original idea of Valentine's Day, St. Valentine's Day for Christian, was love, not romantic love, but love of humanity. And so for, for those people that are feeling bummed out about Valentine's Day, they don't have a relationship, they don't have flowers, they should give cards, Valentine's Day cards, to their friends, their parents. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember in grammar school, Valentine's Day would come up and we would give Valentine's cards to everybody in the class, boys yes. and girls, friends. It wasn't about romantic love, although right. you know, there might have been one cute girl with pigtails that I had a crush on, and her <laughs> card might have been special. But we would give Valentine's Day to our friends, and why not to your neighbors? Happy Valentine's Day. You know, here's a, here's a nice little favor, kind of like the Boy Scouts helping the old lady across the street. Here's a little, here's a little favor. For art, it's a mitzvah. Here's a little something <laughs> for Valentine's Day. And mm -hmm. it's about love. It's not about romance. So I yeah. think for those people that are feeling bummed out, take that other point of view. Well, John, John. I, and God bless all, you, Art. Thank you. Um, <laughs> first, of all, first of all, you've built an expectation, and I'll be looking in my mailbox uh, for my St. Mitzvah card. <laughs> That's the first thing. St. Okay. Mitzvah, I love it. The, the second thing is, Michelle, I promise you I'm going to use all the uh, power that I have within my my every fiber of my body to make sure that Dr. John Valentine doesn't bill you <laughs> for this Valentine therapy <laughs> session. <laughs> so so do you feel better? So so Michelle, do you feel better now? Do you think you can now address the world a little bit better now that <laughs> Dr. Valentine has spoken? The the romantic pressure well, is off. Yeah, well, I, actually, I love the perspective. And frankly, I feel a little ignorant here, but I didn't know that. So I didn't know that it originated as just a, a love towards another person and not with the romantic component. So I'm all for that. I mean, I think that's beautiful. And I think the more we express that kind of care and love, whatever form that is, right? If it's gifts, if it's cards, you know, verbal, uh, the five love languages, you know, whatever. But I think that's beautiful. And I, I, I like that. And I wish I had had that awareness for myself when I was uh, lonely and single and unhappy. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's great. And um, I'm going to take that under advisement. Well, Michelle, I think we should end this by saying happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Mitzvah Day. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.